continuing on with our performance testing for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024 and today we're testing in more of a mid-range build comprising of an AMD 5600X CPU, an Nvidia 3070 which has 8 gigs of VRAM and we've got 32 gigs of DDR4 3600 CL16 memory from Corsair which is in the ballpark of what Microsoft recommend for their recommended spec. They say this spec should target 1440p at 30fps on the high end preset now we've got a six core processor not an eight core that they recommend but it is newer so maybe our six faster cores will be enough we're going to optimize for 1440p in this video the thought being that if it works for 1440 it will work great at 1080 as well i'll show you the 1080p results at the end as well so stick around for that and before anyone mentions it yes i know my windows needs activating for some reason i'm having issues on this build getting my key to activate i don't know why so that's fun we'll have to look into that if you want to skip the video and see the settings first of all how dare you impact my average view duration but second of all it's at the end and at least leave us a like on the way out if you'd be so kind thanks so kicking things off at 1440p on the high-end preset, you can see we're hovering around the 38 to 39-ish FPS mark here in downtown LA. So that's above the 30 that Microsoft said the recommended spec should be targeting, which is a good start, but I think we can do better without affecting the visuals too heavily. And we've got to remember that while it might look okay right now in this moment, we might run into trouble elsewhere in the sim. So we'll be hopping around to various places to see if we can find the limits and then optimize accordingly. Let's start with the terrain level of detail. This is the big hitter in terms of performance. Not only does it impact how detailed the terrain is, but it also impacts the radius around you in which that detail extends. By default on the high end preset, the terrain level of detail goes to 100. So let's start by halving it down to 50. And I think it's fair to say the visual difference is noticeable, but look at that, we're now up to nearly 50 FPS. That's a pretty big jump underlining what we just said about how big of a deal it is in terms of the performance. What about if we split the difference and go to 75? And yeah, you can see now 75 is getting us into the mid 40s, maybe 44, 45 FPS. So this feels like a good compromise to me in terms of bumping the visuals a bit up from 50 while clawing back some frames compared to 100. One thing that does concern me is the VRAM usage on my card. We'll look into that a bit more as the video goes on, fear not. Um, but for me, I think 75 if, is what it's going to be. If you're on a system that's slightly different and maybe you need a bit of help, you could consider dropping down to 50 to get some frames back. But for me, I'm going to go with 75. As for the off-screen terrain pre-caching, this won't change things visually, but going with a higher value will allow more to be cached and it can prevent stutters. It does use up more of your RAM though, so maybe if you're on a 16 gigabyte build, you might need to tread carefully with this. But seeing as we're on a 32 gig setup, even with it set to ultra, we're fine here at the moment and system memory is well within the 32 gig mark, around 22, 23 gig. So I'm gonna go with ultra. Next up, we're gonna look at displacement mapping, which helps us to give things a 3D look like these rocks we're looking at right now. And we're currently sat at around 50 to 51 FPS. This is an on or off setting, so let's turn it off and yeah okay we've maybe gained like two fps but the visuals have taken a bit of a nosedive so i'll be leaving it on i think it's definitely worth the two fps onto building detail which affects the detail and the draw distance of generated buildings we're starting here at the low preset and we're getting around 44 fps moving up to medium we're not seeing much of an impact maybe we've lost a single frame and high we're looking good on high too so out of interest let's try ultra and yeah you can see we're starting to our frames are getting nearer to 40 fps on ultra so on that basis we're going to go with high medium isn't a bad place to be either if your system struggles on high for whatever reason but yeah we're going to go with high next we're looking at trees on the low preset and we're getting around 45 46 fps but look you know the trees they you know they, they look a bit iffy so let's start cranking things up we'll start with going to medium and already i think the trees see a big improvement visually and we're seeing around 44 FPS, which is good. Going to high, which introduces shadows, and now we're seeing a bit more like 38, 39 FPS. So I think given our hardware, I think we need to make smart choices here. So I'm gonna go with medium. Despite really, really wanting to go with high, we're gonna go with medium. Uh, as for plants, I really struggled to find any. Uh, I had to search for ages to find this area here, but we'll start them on the off setting. And you can see, obviously there aren't no plants and we're getting 55 FPS, which is pretty nice. Going to low and we're still at 55 FPS. Medium doesn't seem to impact things either. High is a similar story, still at 55. What about ultra? 
um, Ultra, we're still at 55 FPS. I think, though, I want to give our hardware the best chance of not having a hard time in other areas around the world. So I'm going to play it safe, and I'm going to choose to go with high. As for rocks, we are on the high preset, getting just shy of 50 FPS. Now, going to low on our last video uh, didn't really change the appearance of rocks that much, but it did drop the draw distance substantially, giving quite a janky look. So we're on 50 FPS here on high, and the draw distance is looking really good. Uh, quickly going to low, and we're not seeing any more frames, but the draw distance has become very poor, as we expected. So uh, high it is. For grass, the high-end preset sets the grass to high, and we're getting around 45 FPS here at Bristol Airport. Going to low obviously affects the visuals quite heavily, but it's not getting us any more frames, and medium's obviously the same story. The visuals changed, this time for the better, coming from low, but no extra frames compared to high, so high it will be. All right, I was planning to show you the object level of detail here, kind of going in order of the settings. Um, we're here at Heathrow Airport, but I've been sat here for like 20 minutes having a really hard time with the FPS. I've tried rebooting, the, the results are consistently poor. Uh, this is what I meant when I said it's important to test in a variety of places. I think the culprit here is that our VRAM is being gobbled up here by the scenery at Heathrow. This is a complex airport after all. And this is with our object level of detail cranked down to 50. The high preset started us at 100. I thought maybe going to 50 would fix it. It didn't, and still nothing. Um, so we need to look, I think, at some other VRAM-heavy settings, and we'll start with our texture resolution. It defaults to high on the high-end preset, so let's change it down to low and see if that helps. And look at that. We are now in a much, much better place. Our VRAM is now more under control, and we're getting around 40 FPS here at Heathrow on the runway. I guess that leaves the question, uh, what happens if we go to medium? And the answer is sort of, maybe. Um, yes, we're now you know at 40 FPS, just like we were on the low preset, but it took, a, it took a long time for the sim to calm down after booting. I was sat here for around five minutes waiting for it to settle down from its original kind of five to 10 FPS to get to the 40 we're at now. I didn't experience that on low. It took maybe 30 seconds for the sim to settle down, which is more like it in my opinion. So I think this one will have to be up to you. Maybe if you're on like a, an AMD 6700 XT that's got more VRAM than I have here right now on my 3070, maybe you can get away with medium. But in my case here on an 8GB 3070, I'm going to have to go with low. So now that we are back to our low texture resolution, we can start actually looking at the object level of detail again, which is currently set to 50. Like I said, it defaults to 100 on the high-end preset. Now, the object level of detail affects details like airport buildings, vehicles, planes, and other things. It also impacts the draw distance of these objects. There's a school of thought that it's beneficial to have a very high object level of detail, such that if you're on final approach, things at airports get loaded in when you're further out on your approach, meaning you're less likely to experience a stutter right before touchdown. But here with an, ob an object level of detail of 50, we're just shy of 40 FPS. Going to 100 doesn't seem to have affected our frames all that much at all. RAM and VRAM is under control. I'm going to stick to 100 as I think it's a sensible place to be. Visually between 50 and 100 things change quite a bit. I'll show you that on screen now. Uh, this footage was recorded on my 4080 Super for our prior video, um, but I think the point still stands. Going to 150 and 200, yes it looks a bit better, but the difference isn't as big when we compare between 50 and 100. So 100 it will be. On to clouds and we start on the high setting and we're getting around 46, 47 FPS. Going to low gains us maybe 3 to 4 FPS but the clouds now look terrible. Medium doesn't look much better either and we're not far off where we were in terms of our original FPS when we were on high. Um, so just checking ultra quickly for the science and yeah the clouds do look amazing but we're paying the price with our FPS now down to 43-ish FPS. I think high is the sensible choice here. Looking at anisotropic filtering, I always think I'm saying that wrong, let me know in the comments if I am. Uh, this impacts how things look in the distance and also how things look when you look at them at an extreme angle. Looking at this sign with it set off, it doesn't look great getting around 38, 39 FPS. 2x starts to clear things up a bit, frames unaffected. Uh, you might struggle to see the difference though thanks to YouTube compression, you'll have to take my word for this. 4x continues to improve, FPS unaffected. 8x continues to improve and FPS remains unaffected. Pretty good. 16x also doesn't seem to have impacted FPS, but I'm uh, not seeing a big change visually from 8x. So I think I'm going to err on the side of caution here and go with 8x, keeping in mind the hardware that we're running on. We're trying to be nice to our hardware here. 
checking out waves here at Gibraltar and we're on high and it looks very nice indeed. There's no ultra with waves, just high as, as high as you can go. We're getting around 48, 49 FPS and if we drop it to medium, we take a slight drop in visuals, but we're not really getting any frames back either. So I think we can probably get away with high here. Though keep medium you know, in mind if you're struggling as it still does look pretty good. I can't really recommend low though. That doesn't look great at all. Now looking at shadow maps, this is with ray trace shadows turned off. We'll enable them at the end and show you the difference. We're on the lowest setting here of 768 and we're getting around 35 FPS though the shadows aren't looking great. Moving to 1024, things improve visually and no impact to FPS. 1536 continues with things looking better and again no impact to FPS. Let's go to 2048 and we're not seeing a massive impact to FPS but I'm conscious with our hardware it might be better off being cautious and going with say 1536 which is actually the default value for the high-end preset. Now enabling ray trace shadows and you can see how much better it looks but look at the FPS that's over 5 FPS we've lost and when we're dealing with FPS numbers in the 30 that's a big proportion. As much as I loved ray trace shadows I think maybe on this hardware it might be worth leaving them off. I'm going to go with 1536 for shadow maps I guess you can decide to enable ray tracing shadows. Uh, it's kind of up to you. I guess it depends how much you value them. But for me, I think, sadly, I've got to leave them off on this hardware. Looking at terrain shadows now, and we've come to the Grand Canyon, and they're on their lowest value of 128. We're getting around 44 FPS. Moving to 256, there's no drop in FPS. Uh, visuals seem to look a bit better. 512 is a similar story, maintaining our FPS. 1024 things feel like frames are starting to drop off a little bit so i'm starting to think 512 might be the way to go here let's just look at 2048 just to see and yeah we're now down to like 35 fps i think given the hardware we're running on 512 is a sensible trade-off here between visuals and fps contact shadows now and with them off we're seeing 63 fps damn moving to the low setting we're seeing about 61 fps which isn't bad and a big visual difference between low and off of course going to medium keeps us at around 60 61 fps so that's good moving to high and it's the same story around 60 fps uh, and it remains the same at ultra 2 i think though I'm, I'm going to kind of continue with the theme of being cautious on this one. I'm going to go with medium, in fact, because I prefer our hardware, you know, have a bit of breathing room should we find ourselves in a tough situation. Um, and I think it looks more than good enough at medium. Ambient occlusion, and we're getting around 35 FPS with it set to high, which is where it defaults to on the high end preset. Turning it off um, doesn't seem to have changed a lot for us. So high is looking pretty good on that basis. Let's just try ultra and yeah same story 35 fps i think probably due to us being main thread limited um i think though again out of an abundance of caution i'm going to go with high here rather than ultra cube map reflections are now set to the lowest value of 128 we're hovering around 46 fps moving to 192 no degradation in fps same story with 256 and 384 we do drop a couple of frames so i think on balance 256 is the way to go here um, if you struggle 192 is a good fallback ray march reflections are currently set to high and we're getting 55 56 fps here at gibraltar and it looks great turning them off makes things obviously look a lot worse we've gained maybe three fps um, i think given the visual difference on offer here i think it's well worth leaving them on and high seems to be a great place to be in terms of fps and visuals Going to Ultra doesn't have a massive impact on FPS here either. I think, though, in the spirit of playing it safe, let's go with high. If I was on my 4080 Super, I probably wouldn't care. Um, but with this uh, weaker hardware, we're aiming for stability here above all. Looking at light shafts, we currently have them off and we're getting 43, 44 FPS, turning them onto low, and it's a big upgrade visually, no hit to FPS. Medium's a similar story, high is a similar story, and so is Ultra. But again, I want to try and limit my hardware's ability to run into issues so i'm going to play it safe and go with medium i thought i've got to be honest i thought low looked pretty good checking out the glass cockpit refresh rate and we're currently set to medium and we're getting 36 37 fps now this used to be quite a heavy hitting setting in 2020 uh, but now in 2024 allegedly it's multi-threaded so let's turn it on to high and yeah there's no measurable hit to fps i'd say we could get away with leaving it on high on this one good result as for all the other settings below the glass cockpit refresh rate, this will really depend on how you use the sim. I fly on VATSIM, so I'll turn off all the traffic stuff. I don't really care about 
the character quality and the traffic stuff doesn't seem to have a huge impact in fact when i tried the uh the ship's uh traffic between dover and calais i couldn't see any ships so i don't know if that's bugged for me or not okay back to our spot in la where it all began and where we were getting 38 39 fps for our high-end preset and as you can see we're now getting 46 47 48 fps we're knocking on the door of 50 fps with our optimized settings at 14 40p and it's important that we optimize our sim especially when you consider what we saw with our vram usage bringing us to a crawl at heathrow we could have just you know taken a look at la and been like great it's fine um job done now here in la it's obviously a heavy hitting area in its own right frames are nice and high ram and vram are under control and all does seem to be well Flicking over to 1080p and you can see we're basically getting the same FPS. We're limited by our CPU, which means our GPU is quite happy, which is good. Uh, so what about DLSS and FSR upscaling? Well, for one thing, I don't like how it looks in general. I find it makes the glass cockpits look very smeary. I don't like it a single bit. Also, we're now limited by our main thread here in LA. So enabling DLSS to make things easier on our GPU won't have any benefit at all to us here. Just to prove it, here's 1080p with DLSS set to quality and 1440p and as you can see there's nothing in it my advice is leave it off where possible if you're really struggling fine turn it on do what you need to do but if you can get away with leaving it off thank you very much indeed for watching folks i'll leave the settings here rolling across the screen in case you want them as a reference leave us a comment let us know how you're getting on with the sim what hardware you're running it on etc and also leaving a like helps the video and the channel a ton so if you found today's video useful it would be very much appreciated and get subbed for more content and live streams and until next time, folks, look after yourselves, be good to each other, and as always, happy flying.